Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you in this session. Myself Anuradha and today we will discuss the chapter Control and Coordination of your NCRT book. So after this session, you will be able to understand the concept of control and coordination. So let's start with the meaning of control and coordination. Here, control means how organs of a body work in proper way. You know there are systems in a body like the digestive system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system, reproductive system, excretory system. So all these systems should work in a controlled way, not too much or not too less. For example, like your heart is pumping the blood, so it should work properly, it should function properly, otherwise it may lead to disorders. So Talking about the coordination, like when you are playing a game or doing a group task, when your teacher asks you to do a group task and if one of your friends start doing different activities, then all your tasks may get spoiled. You all should work in a coordinated way so that you can complete the task. Like this, in our body, organs like the brain, the heart, the kidney, all should work in a coordinated manner so as to work properly. Not only inside, outside also we have to perform a lot of tasks like walking, playing, writing, reading. All these activities are also controlled by a body and because of coordination we can do all our work in daily routine. So in short, they are essential for the proper functioning of an organism and the regulation of different functions of different systems. So let's start the topic with how this control and coordination happens in a body. All living organisms react to sudden changes in environment. Think about the situation when you suddenly touches a hot pan or a hot plate. What will you do? You immediately withdraw your hand, you pull back your hand. Why? Because your brain gives you a signal not to touch the object as it can be harmful for you. So heat here is the stimuli and withdrawing hand is the reaction. So what is the stimuli? So basically stimuli, all living organisms react to the changes in the environment around them these changes in which an organism react and respond are called stimuli such as light, heat, smell, touch, cold, etc. When a beam of light comes to your eye, you give reaction by closing your eyes. When your mother cook food for you, you can detect the food by smell of food. When you touch something, you can detect whether an object is hot or cold. So both the plants and the animal respond to stimuli, but in different manner. Remember the touch me not plant. What happens when you touch this plant? So whenever you touch the plant, the leaf starts curling. In animals, control and coordination is done by two main systems, the nervous system and the endocrine system. So the human nervous system is divided into two parts, the CNS and PNS. Here CNS is central nervous system which consists of brain and spinal cord. PNS consists of or the peripheral nervous system consists of cranial nerves and spinal nerves. So let us discuss about nervous system. So the control and coordination is provided by nervous and muscular tissues. Nervous tissues are made up of nerve cells or neurons. These neurons are capable of sending messages from one part of the body to another part of the body by electrical impulses. At the site of action of a stimuli, some chemicals are released that are received by receptors. These receptors are parts of nerve cells or they are the specialized tips that detect the information from environment. 
these are located in our sense organs. We know about the sense organs, we have ears which act as phonoreceptor. For example, whenever you hear a sound or whenever you hear a loud sound, you just close your ears. So, the receptors are working here. Eyes that act as photoreceptor. Skin which act as thermoreceptor. Nose which act as olfactory receptor. Tongue which act as gustatory receptor. These receptors receive information then response are generated from the brain. So, basically there are three type of responses. The first one is voluntary response. So, as the name suggested voluntary means the response which is under control. It requires thinking and are performed consciously controlled by forebrain. For example, writing, talking. Second one is involuntary action. This is not under our control. They are automatic responses controlled by the mid and the handbrain. For example, heart beating, vomiting, etc. For example, if you are vomiting, you will do. You cannot control or you cannot stop the action of vomiting by your own. The third one and the most important is the reflex action. This is a spontaneous response to a stimuli which is controlled by spinal cord. So, this reflex action is a quick, sudden and immediate response of a body to a stimulus. Example, knee jerk, withdrawal of hand on touching hot object which we discussed earlier. So, this reflex action work through a reflex arc. This is the pathway through which the nerve impulses passes during the reflex action. So, why there is a need of reflex action? So, basically this is to save us from harms. For example, if there is something which is harmful for us, for example, if we are touching a hot object and we consciously think about the pain and possibility of getting burned and therefore move the hand when response come from the brain, it will take long time. So, to reduce the time taken for action, response is generated from spinal cord. In the whole process of reflex action, sensory neurons, motor neurons and relay neurons are used. Let us discuss more about the neurons. So, basically these neurons are the structural and functional unit of nervous system. These are the largest cell in body. It consists of five parts. First, cell body which is the central portion of neuron that contains the nucleus. Second, dendrites. These are the cell extensions which are branched and numerous. They receive information from other neurons and transmit towards the cell body. Third, exon. It conducts the masses away from the cell body and transmit to another cell. And nerve endings. They transmit the impulses in the form of chemicals. So, basically these neurons are in the form of chain attached from the nerve ending to the dendrite of another neurons. At the point where two neurons are joined, there is a small gap. Basically, these two neurons are joined from nerve ending to the dendrites. Between nerve ending of one neuron and the dendrite of another neuron, there is a small gap which is called synapse. The gap between two nerve cells here electric impulses or electric signals are converted into chemical signals for onward transmission. So, the information which is go through the body of one neuron reaches to the nerve ending. Here the electrical impulse get converted into chemical which is received by the dendrite of another neuron. 
in the same way the information reaches to the site of action. Second and another important part of nervous system is brain. The communication between central nervous system and different part of body is facilitated by the peripheral nervous system. Here main coordinating center of body is brain. It receives signals from all part of the body. Brain contains three parts, the forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain. The hindbrain is further divided into three parts, pons, cerebellum and medulla. So starting with the forebrain, the first part, this is the main thinking part of the brain. It receives impulses from various receptors. There are separate section for hearing, smell, sight, etc. Think of a situation when you are feeling hungry. So this hunger is also controlled by your forebrain. Moving to next, do we think about breathing or heart beating? We cannot control these actions. These actions are involuntary actions which are controlled by midbrain and hindbrain. Many of the involuntary actions like blood pressure, salivation and vomiting are controlled by medulla which is the part of hindbrain. Activities like walking, cycling in a straight line, these all are controlled by cerebellum which is the part of hindbrain. Voluntary actions like posture of the body, when you are sitting straight, it is also controlled by the hindbrain. So at last, we learnt about the control and coordination in body, structure and function of neuron and importance of reflex action. We also discuss about the part of human brain. So there is a simple question for all of you. During a reflex action, do the information received by brain also? So with this question, we end the session. Thank you.